I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 6 of my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. I'll be fishing with a three-quarter ounce s and bucktail tipped with a four-inch Berkeley Gulp Alive Swimming Mullet. One foot ahead of that is a three-inch Gulp Shrimp on a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. So dock fishing for fluke, or uh, also known as summer flounder in many parts of the country, uh, can be somewhat challenging because you're stationary. Uh, in all of the other environments uh, that I write about in the book, uh, you're mobile and you're drifting or you're uh, covering some ground by walking along a bay shoreline or a beach or wading a sandbar. And in a situation like this on a dock, you know, the dock is stationary, so um, you know, the only water accessible to you is whatever is within casting range. But on the upside, um, first of all, docks are plentiful, right? They're, they're in many different places along creeks and channels and so forth. And um, if you can think about docks versus fishing piers, you know, the docks are mostly private or, or they're owned by municipalities and uh, they're provided to uh, give access to waterways, which means typically there are some boat channels nearby. And fishing piers are obviously built uh, to provide fishing access, and typically nobody's going to build a fishing pier in an area without fish. So uh, just the fact that there would be a fishing pier probably means you've got some fishing opportunities uh, within casting range. So I'll refer to both uh, fishing piers and docks as just plain docks throughout this video. All right, so uh, all right, so they're stationary, but they provide access to uh, boat channels. And also, well, you see the pilings going down that anchor the dock. Uh, you know, you've got all kinds of growth on a piling, and uh, you know that will attract some bait fish. Also, the dock will break the current. So you've got some interesting bottom structure. You have a current break. You probably have something that attracts bait. And when you add all of this together, uh, docks can provide some pretty good opportunities for fishing. So let's get into the fishing details here. I'm probably standing on top of seven feet of water, casting into, oh, maybe 10, 12 feet of water. It's, it's not too deep. Uh, the objective is going to be to uh, make sure that jig gets down near the bottom, and then uh, slow retrieve with lots of rapid jigging, put a lot of action on that jig. And at different points in the video, you'll be able to get a pretty good look at the retrieve speed. and. Uh, one of the things about fishing higher up, uh, you know, if you're standing on the shore and you have more of a, a gradual slope uh, into deeper water, that's different from standing on top of seven feet of water and being stationary. So something I have to be uh, very aware of is that as that jig is getting closer to the dock, the line angle is getting steeper. Um, so the jig naturally wants to come up off the bottom. And you'll notice at times what I'll do is I'll stop the retrieve as I get close to the dock in order to make sure that uh, the jig settles back down and stays near the bottom. And that's very important because, um, as I mentioned, the, the dock itself uh, will attract fish and it, it's on the edge of a channel. So I want to make sure that um, when I get close to the dock with the lure, that it's in the strike zone, which means it's near the bottom, within a foot or two. And since I'm stationary, it makes a lot of sense to fan cast and, and try to cover as much water as possible. So that's why I'm throwing casts, uh, in this case, not straight out, but um, kind of up current. I, I have the current is coming at me at this point. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just, some casts I will make straight out, some, some to the right, just trying to cover as much bottom as I can, even though um, I can't move too much. Now this cast is going to show a perfect example of uh, what you need to do when you get close to the dock. At some point here, as I'm getting close, I'm going to stop that retrieve or slow it way down to make sure the jig gets near the bottom, and then I'll very carefully work that bottom that's close to the dock. And throughout this video, you'll see times where I set the hook and miss. If you miss the fish, just keep it moving. It'll keep coming back at it. And you can see that one hit basically right next to the dock. So 
So this doc and uh, this trip in particular have, have some special meaning for me personally. Uh, this doc had been uh, in my family since I was like five years old, so you know I've had access to this thing for 50 years. Uh, and it's, it's where I kind of grew up fishing, and we caught all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of winter flounder at the time uh, when I was young. Also, uh, weak fish, also called sea trout. Uh, blue fish, striped bass, blue claw crabs. Uh, fluke did not used to be very plentiful. In fact, uh, it wasn't until I made this video that I realized this was the very first time I had ever targeted fluke from the dock. Um, and you can see it working out quite well. And I did that because uh, my, my father had fished down below here and um, had been catching them, so I, I knew they would be here, so I took my camera and decided I would uh, try to get some dock fishing on video. And what I couldn't have known while I was filming this was that this would be the very last time I would ever fish this dock. Uh, my father passed away a couple of months after this. The, um, the place was sold. And that was it. And uh, so uh, it's kind of sad, but uh, I'm glad that I had the camera running and I managed to get my last ever fishing trip here uh, recorded on video. And I didn't include all of the fish that I caught on this trip uh, on this video, but I made sure that the very last fish that's on this video is the last fish uh, that I'll ever catch on this dock. Well, there must be a lot of them down there. I think what happens in this case is the fish uh, goes after the, the teaser and uh, just inadvertently hit him with the bucktail jig. The rod is a 7-foot pen regiment. It is rated uh, 8 to 15 pound test line. Uh, the line is 15 pound test braid. Uh, the reel is a pen conflict 3000. The terminal rig that I showed at the beginning of the video is tied with 20 pound test fluorocarbon. And I don't use fluorocarbon because of the, the fact that it's clear. Um, it, I really use it for the abrasion resistance because the fish constantly grabbing on, especially on the teaser, a lot of times they get the line in their mouth. And um, fluorocarbon has a little, bit be a, a little bit better abrasion resistance, so I, I go with fluorocarbon. And that rig is connected to the main line. Uh, with a barrel swivel, and I have a Palomar knot between the barrel swivel and the braid, uh, and then a clinch knot uh, between the fluorocarbon and the barrel swivel. Okay, I'm pretty much done with the narrating. I might jump in at a few points along the way. There's uh, quite a bit more fishing uh, to come. It's all pretty much the same. There's, uh, I'm not going to catch any big ones here, uh, but just you know, pretty good action. All right, I would encourage you to check out the book Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com.
So I'm not catching them every cast. You see there's a little bit of editing. But if you look at the position of the sun um, and compare it to when I started, you see it hasn't moved very much. So I'm definitely catching them most casts, maybe two out of three casts or so. And this is it. This is my uh, last fish I'll catch from this dock.